This can delay on the trains or the planes in Somerset. Anything you can update us on, please give us a call on 0845 303 1566. Do you eat meat, Sky, or are you a vegetarian? I personally eat meat, but I'm quite fussy. I'd rather not eat meat than not know where it comes from, and I do prefer fish. But I do <laughs> eat meat. To not, to not know where it comes from? Well, like, I like to know if it's sort of local and organic. I'm not going to eat sort of budget bacon. I'd just rather eat vegetables. That's fine for I me. I don't know if that is f- fussy or whether that's just, well, you know, that you like good quality stuff. Yeah, I've been called very pretentious for it. <laughs> By whom? Um, normally my flatmates at the university who I now live with and have a range of vegetarian and completely eat meat as their main diet by is preference. That, so are your family all sort of meat eaters as well? Then? My dad eats meat and is probably slightly less fussy than I am. Mum is vegetarian because she had cancer and when she was in hospital um, read a lot about the sort of health um, things around meat. But she says that when she was in hospital not knowing if she was going to get better. She felt that there are very few things that she could sort of control in her life and choosing not to eat meat was one thing that she could change that might make a difference. So she's been vegetarian since then. My sister's been vegetarian since she was probably about eight and clearly she thinks eating meat is wrong. So our family is sort of half and half, yeah. But mum is an excellent cook, luckily, and doesn't mind cooking meat. Oh, really? So I bet nice. her vegetarian dishes are fantastic. Excellent. Yeah. Probably that's why I don't really mind eating vegetarian. <laughs> so you can, brilliant you can eat the finest meat and the finest yeah, vegetarian I foods. get the best of both worlds. Get out, I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> Sky with the travel. She'll be back at um, 10 o'clock today. BBC Somerset. I've been asking you today if we should eat meat. On BBC Two's Horizon this evening, Dr Michael Mosley will be going on a high meat diet and monitoring the effects, uh, looking into the environmental, ethical and health issues around our consumption of meat. We're going to speak to him in a moment. Here's a little look ahead to tonight's programme, though. The scale and the growth in livestock production is inherently unsustainable. We can't do it. If we want to eat meat, Is there a way to do so without destroying the planet? This is the reality, and the reality says this is green. So, what should I be eating if I want to become a more eco-friendly carnivore? Chicken or beef? Free-range or intensively farmed? And Dr Michael Mosley joins me now. Good morning, Michael. Good morning, hi there. Yeah, lovely to have you with us. Um, I, f- first of all, have you always been a, a meat eater and a lover of meat? I have, and um, this whole exploration of meat actually began because I had a bit of a domestic with my wife, who's a GP. <laughs> right. Uh, we, met, we met at medical school, and she's pretty much since then been urging me to reduce the amount of red and processed meat I eat and become more of a vegetarian and I've never been convinced so uh, eventually the editor of Horizon said let's try and um, sort this out for you Uh, why don't you go off and find out just um, what the evidence is how strong is the evidence about the bad effects if you like of particularly red and processed meat eating and what impact does it really have on the planet so that's what I did and and we've had (laughs) well we've had lots of people calling today about the, what they feel are the bad effects of, of meat, but other people are extremely passionate about the fact that humans are designed to eat meat as well. It's, fun, it's funny, isn't it? This is such a controversial debate, and it has. I, I don't know if we'll ever find the right answer, but it's, it's fascinating. And the experts don't agree. So that I've got some experts who say that you should probably eat meat, perhaps a couple of times a year, uh, preferably not. Others who say, actually, it's fine to eat it a couple of days a week. So uh, it's almost like a court case where you assemble the evidence, you come to your own conclusions. (laughs) And certainly... There are no clear-cut answers, but there are really, really interesting areas where you can sort of prowl around and look at the evidence. And uh, one thing is reasonably clear, and that is that um, chicken is fine. Say something like beef. It takes 
10 pounds of feed to produce a pound of beef. Whereas with chicken, it's more like 1.6, 1.7 pounds of feed to produce a pound of chicken. So it's incredibly efficient. And that means that its environmental impact is surprisingly small. And uh, one of the more controversial things I came across was certainly the claim that eating, um, you know, intensively reared chicken could well be one of the more environmentally sound things you can do. There's obviously the health issues, there are also the ethical issues, but it's really, really interesting. And as you say, it uh, arouses a great deal of passion. How much did the programme and, and the process of making it influence your choices sort of further down the line of what you eat? Has anything changed for you diet-wise? Uh, quite a lot. I mean, this morning I'm staying at a um, hotel in Salford, up here in the BBC, mm. and I walked past the buffet this morning, I looked at the bacon, I looked at the sausages, and I <laughs> left them alone. Really? Because one of the more, yeah, one of the more striking statistics um, I came across is from a Professor David Spiegelhofer from Cambridge University, and he's kind of crunched numbers, and he came to the conclusion that eating a couple of rashes of bacon uh, knocks about an hour off your life. <laughs> oh, you shouldn't have said that, Michael. That's going to ruin any hotel experience for me from now on. <laughs> on, the, on the plus side, however, if you drink uh, a couple of cups of coffee, then that probably adds about half an hour to your life. So um, if you mix the coffee and the bacon sandwiches, nice. then maybe you can balance it out. <laughs> well, you're not afraid to try things out on your programmes, are you? Was this something you were apprehensive about, or was this more was this one of the easier ones? Uh, this was one of the easy ones, one of the ones I was hugely looking forward to because I have largely been on uh, a sort of chicken, fish, occasional bits of meat, uh, feeling a bit guilty about eating the meat, sort of a diet. And um, this was an opportunity to let rip for five or six weeks. So, um, And my wife looked on indulgently <laughs> as I tucked in to the red beef and the lamb and um, also all the bacon. I bet she did. Oh, great to speak to you, Dr Michael Mosley. We're going to continue the debate here. Here on BBC Somerset, though, Heidi in Shepton Mallet says, Ben, I became a vegetarian when I was eight and was old enough to realise that eating meat was wrong. I'm a farmer's daughter and my father gave me a pet calf. I had it for about nine months. Then one day, when I was at school, my father took it to market. I came home to £85 on the table. I just wanted my calf back, so that was it. My parents weren't happy, but after a lot of fighting, they eventually accepted it. I'm now virtually vegan but I wouldn't inflict my views on anyone else. My children have eaten meat until they're old enough to decide for themselves. One is now vegetarian, the other still eats meat. Well, if a farmer's daughter can become a vegetarian, surely anyone can. Ross is back. Very quickly, what you just said then on Heidi's comment, I don't know if anyone watched the BBC programme The Village last night. Oh, yeah. Because they had a scene like that in the programme where the young girl had a small Frisian calf and they were taking it to market. It was too young to go to market and she didn't want to let it go, yeah. knowing what was going to happen to him. But um, I think that's the big thing, is that when you have something as a pet but is an animal which is often associated with farms. Yeah. That's when you sort of it get, you sort of have that mindset then thinking, hang on a minute, yeah, it is an animal, but that will end up as meat. You don't think that about other kind of animals. But no, it's strange. Yeah. Um, and you've, you're quite interesting, aren't you? Cause, well, I say you're quite interesting. I'm very interesting, Ben. Yeah. Sometimes you're always interesting. Do you, you eat meat now, don't you? I do. But you was, used to be a vegetarian. Yeah, not for very long. How um, long? A few months. Oh, that's that's not vegetarian. I never. I, was, I did it for a few months. Why I did could, you do it? I did. I could have continued. I wanted to try it, see if I could do it, basically, right. and see if I could live with that meat. And I and I found it fun. I tried lots of alternatives, but the thing is, I love food. I really love food. I love trying food, and I missed going to part. I say to parties if I'm some sort of socialite, but going to events and trying things. I'm the sort of person I want to try. I want to try a free sample. I want to try something. Get like a, if it's like a family party or friends party. I want to try something on the table. Greedy, essentially. I, I wasn't really doing it for the the ethics side. It's more of the personal challenge side. I might try it again. <laughs> what about if you're a vegetarian and you um, become pregnant, and then you sort of cra yeah, maybe you have a craving for. For meat, do you eat then because you're pregnant? You can justify it. Do you it? make sure that uh, do you bring your children up as vegetarians? You, well, like Heidi didn't, did she? Yeah, but she let go. them make their choice. We're going to speak to Alan in me in a moment. Emma Britton. If I could wave a magic wand and you could go and live and work and farm anywhere else, would you go? No. Let's speak to Alan in me. Good morning, Alan. Good morning. Sorry to keep you hanging on. Um, That's okay. No problem. <laughs> thank you so much for calling. Um, where do you stand on the meat debate? Uh, I'm an avid meat eater. 
And going back to your thing, what you're doing when you listen to the radio, every morning I prepare the meat for my hawks. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah, I was actually preparing a load of meat as you were talking about it. That is unusual. There we go. Not everyone is preparing meat for hawks. How many hawks have you got? I've got, well, I've got about 27 birds of prey altogether. Wow. Now, they don't have any alternative but to eat meat, do they? They, no, they, they no. are very much... Well, they're, they're the same as us. They're designed to eat meat. Go on, tell us the argument then. Why do you feel so passionately uh, that, that you're a carnivore well, and that's I'm the way you old, stay? Sc- I'm old school. I was brought up on a farm in a tight cottage and I was taught by my father to go out, hunt it, shoot it, prepare it, and cook it and eat it. And I still do it today. You don't have any um, inclination then at all to consider other types of... Uh, no, other ways no. of eating, other I diets? I have meat seven days a week. Do you eat too much meat, Alan? No. I'm Are you sure? Years, I'm 61 years old. I've never been in hospital, I never go and see doctors, and I can take people up on the downs with my hawks in their 30s and they can't keep up with me on the hills and the downs. Tell us what you would eat on a typical day. Uh, well, I have roast beef, roast potatoes, and everything, a typical roast. Now I have pork chops another night, perhaps a casserole another night. I might have a quail that I've got, or pheasant in the season, rabbit. Whatever you, meat's going, you I'll mix, eat it. You mix it up, then. You don't just have one sort of meat. Oh, no, no, not one sort of meat. Any sort of meat. And is that is that intentional, or is that just the way it is? That's just the way it is. I like my meat. And every... I mean, I've, I've not got nothing against vegetarians. It's their choice. Everybody's got a choice on what they eat. But you don't... I mean, you I, know, I, if, I if feel it's... perfectly healthy and fit yeah. on, on my diet. Okay. And it's their choice. Well, I don't mind. It's up to them. It's their choice. But do you think that but they're missing out, What I don't like Alan? is vegetarians saying to me, oh, you shouldn't eat meat, you shouldn't eat meat. Because I don't say to people that are vegetarians, oh, you should eat meat. Are, are they missing out, do you think, people that don't eat meat? I think so. What, I think what are they so. missing out on? goodness. All the goodness in meat. You can't beat fresh meat. Um, I mean, I don't know the science of it all, and I don't want to get into it. All I know is <laughs> I've been a meat eater all my life. I love it. I mean, yesterday I was at a show, yeah. and I walk along, and I smelled the bacon, and I had to go and have a bacon roll. <laughs> yeah, but that's that's <laughs> thing is about that is that not processed? No, no something like no, bacon. No, no, no. I was brought up on a farm, as I say. Yeah, and uh, my dad used to pick up his shotgun and he used to say to mother, "What do you want for the dinner table this week?" And he'd pick up the car and he'd go out and he'd shoot her as the food for the week. <laughs> good, good, good. Good work, Alan. Lovely yeah, to speak right, to you. Lovely to have you. you. Thank you for calling. Alan in Mir there, who is preparing meat for his hawks this morning. That's his unusual thing whilst listening to the show. And very much a meat eater as well. <laughs> Coming up with Ben McGrail. And um, we've been asking, should we eat meat? 